centuries of martyrdom and struggle, the Inquisition is firmly entrenched in positions of power. Cloaked monks and robed priests of the Inquisition have given way to arrogant mathematicians who today pose as physicists and scientists, zombies who are cut with the same cookie cutter along the lengthy university assembly lines. The mathematicians have maneuvered to institutionalize authority. idolatry, and above all, censorship. Censorship is so entrenched in the mathematical world that it is about as easy to publish a qualitative criticism of general relativity and quantum mechanics in a mainstream journal as it is to squeeze a camel through a needle's eye. What is alarming is that censorship has creeped in to become a habit among people who consider themselves dissidents. In 2004, after Nature and Science journals censored me, I submitted two articles to the Church of Aperion. The bishops were disgusted. They accused me of heresy. And shortly after, they summoned me before the Peer Inquisition. What do you mean a field is not an object? This is blasphemy, the lead inquisitor shouted. I was aware that all the theories of Torquemada and his buddies revolved around the word field. If there was no physical object called field, what did this say about their religion? I was putting on trial the very foundations of their beliefs. The editors stood behind their bishops saying that they were all experts in their fields. They rubber-stamped the decision. And guess what? I never saw my articles in print. Last year, I published an introduction to thread theory in a mainstream journal. A couple of people unrelated to me placed these references in the Wikipedia article carrying my name. The references to this peer-reviewed article have consistently been deleted by vigilant mainstream fanatics, fearful that such heresy might reach a broader audience. In December of 2010, Stephen Molinet from Free Domain Radio, an allegedly free and progressive channel, contacted me and asked me if I would agree to be interviewed. We had what I believe to be a cordial dialogue between two individuals who don't share the same views on atheism and the scientific method. Predictably, there were differences of opinion. And still, during the interview, Molyneux had no choice but to concede some points, specifically that the existence or non-existence of God is not a matter of belief or proof. Does God disappear? Does he vanish because I refuse or I don't believe in God? Well, if God exists subjectively, then he does not cease to exist if you disbelieve in him. Hopefully. <laughs> Just like my chair, hopefully it does not disappear because I refuse to believe in it. Right, right. And, and my so, point, sorry, go ahead. My point, Stefan, let me get to the point. My point is that belief has absolutely nothing to do with existence. There is no provision for belief or knowledge in, or faith or wisdom in the definition of exist. All right. Uh, I certainly believe, uh, I accept that belief does not determine existence. In other words, if I believe there are leprechauns, they don't pop into existence. We should stop saying that I believe or I don't believe in the existence of God. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you because it, then it says it's more of an opinion. Of course, this didn't bode well with Free Domain Radio, since it has to appease its donors. Stefan wrote to me a couple of weeks after the interview saying that the color went out on the video after five minutes, and that because of that, he would not be airing the clip. However, people close to him in his forum said something different. After a member requested a second interview, one answered, well, to put your mind at ease, then, it's almost certainly not going to happen. 
for at least the following reasons. First, the last interview was pretty bad. Several people found him off-putting, to say the least. Very hard to follow, and or uncertain of the exact point he was trying to make. Second, Steph is limited on resources, especially time. It takes quite a lot of investment for him to do one of these interviews, so there needs to be a compelling case to bring somebody back for another interview. A second member exposed what was really going on behind the scenes. Steph's credibility and name recognition is on the rise, and he'd probably like to keep it that way, which is why the original video with Gady was buried as fast as humanly possible. So in addition to censorship, we have hypocrisy. If as Malinan stated, the quality of the video did not come out right, you would think that he would have just scheduled another one. Last year, I suffered ridicule and persecution at the Zeitgeist Movement, the one-time militant arm of Jack Fresco's Venus Project. People who are preparing for and propose a new socio-economic model based on post-scarcity. Post-scarcity is a utopian world where goods and services are so abundant that they are free. Of course, the last person these folks wish to listen to is someone like me. I argue that we are the last humans on Earth. The backlash was hostile from the start of my thread. The moderator finally disabled comments and cynically placed the entire thread under religion. Early this year I was banished from the UK Preppers Forum for similar reasons. Was it because I used foul language? Because I spammed the site? or attack someone? No. I was banished merely for raising the subject of our species' imminent extinction. I received so much hate mail from the start of my post that it was unreal. Finally, I asked the preppers to tell me what they were prepping for. No one could give me a straight answer. Some offered vague replies as if they never even pondered the matter. Most had in mind a natural catastrophe that temporarily deprived them of resources, specifically power and water. Will a tsunami overrun England? Some worried about nuclear war. And then, of course, there were a couple who almost broke the code, the collapse of the economy. But even here, the economic meltdown was seen as something temporary. The proponents could not explain why our economy would bounce back. One day, the entire thread was deleted, including comments made by other members. Why? Even if they did not agree with my proposal, there was no reason to delete the thread and censor everyone who had participated in the debate. In October of 2011, I started making two videos, one about the workings of the solar system and the other one about black holes and the mechanisms of galaxies. At that time, Kim from our discussion group asked me whether I was going to attend the Electric Universe conference in Las Vegas in January of 2012. This was the first I had heard of that get-together. In November, Stephen Smith from the Electric Universe formally invited me to attend. I replied that I could not, but that I would appreciate him showing the two videos I was preparing in my stead. He told me that he would have a look at them and asked me to send him a couple of clips. I clarified that I was not asking him to review my videos or to take responsibility for their contents. I was merely asking him to show them at the Electric Universe since I was proposing a different universe than the Electric Universe. As an example, I added that I was going to argue, among other things, that plasma, the bread and butter of the Electric Universe, is not a physical object. I could just as well have told a Christian that Jesus had never existed. Steve impulsively wrote back, There isn't a substance called plasma? Plasma is ionized matter. Before I had a chance to reply, Steve deleted the entire thread. I thought that was quite rude of him. A scientist would prefer to confront his accusers rather than run away. So I immediately became a member of the Facebook Electric Universe and started a thread titled Censorship in which I objected to being censored so barbarically. Were these the rules of engagement of the electric universe, or was this an isolated incident? I wrote, 
I only joined the Facebook Electric Universe group temporarily merely to put this letter. You can delete me and the letter from the group at your discretion. It is actually quite ironic that people from the Electric Universe, who protest against censorship from the mathematical establishment, then turn around and censor people who don't totally bow down to their gods. Steve's girlfriend Tiffany came to the rescue, saying that it had all been a misunderstanding. However, this issue was not resolved when the entire censorship thread I had started was wiped out as well. The Electric Universe folks did indeed practice censorship. The moderator for our science forum sent a letter to Tiffany to request clarification of what appeared to be institutionalized censorship. Censorship and frankly clumsy attempt to cover it up isn't going to go unnoticed. Tiffany wrote back, Sorry, but it will. Brutal truth. Nobody cares. There are far more successful free thinkers that get censored all the time. Join the club. Either you rise above it or drown in your own pity party. Well, the truth finally came out. The charade became exposed for what it really was. The breathtaking reply showed that the folks at the Electric Universe were indeed censoring people who questioned their beliefs. These are the appalling ethics practiced by this dissident group, which purports to do science. What happened next only confirmed my harsh assessment. Without any reason whatsoever, without having spammed or cussed anyone, the moderators at the Electric Universe wiped my name from their roster as well. Censorship has no place in a scientific forum. The dissidents at Free Domain, at the Zeitgeist Movement, at the Venus Project, at the Electric Universe have yet to learn the fundamentals. Science is about exchanging ideas. Without ground rules of fair play, without a constitution, without a law of conduct or of debate, these organizations have no future. In fact, they would find it to their advantage to allow for dissenting opinions in their forums. It would enrich the discussions. As long as these people continue shielding their theories from analysis and criticism by resorting to underhanded censorship, they will be as far away from science as the religions they dare to criticize. Thank mm -hmm. you.